Will there finally be peace in the southern Philippines? In just a few weeks, the government's expected to sign a final agreement with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, or MILF, creating a semi-autonomous area in Mindanao called Bangsamoro. This after 40 years of fighting and 15 years of negotiations. It's a landmark event, not just for the Philippines, but beyond. Many believe there are lessons here. How to deal with armed insurgents, and how to deal with the human sacrifice involved. Hundreds of thousands of people were killed here during the conflict. But there are concerns about the final peace deal. There's a split between the MILF and the other Islamic insurgent group, the Mora National Liberation Front. Will they be working together now in the new state? Do they want to? And what kind of society will take hold here? A pure Islamic state? What will happen to Christians living here? And then there's the current conflict in the Malaysian state of Sabah. Some say Islamic fighters from Mindanao are involved, potentially jeopardizing the final peace deal, which is being brokered by the Malaysian government. To answer all these questions, we decided to seek out the man who's now leading negotiations on behalf of the fighters, the head of the MILF in Mindanao, Murad Ibrahim. Chairman Murad, so much has happened since we last spoke. Most significantly, of course, in October, when you went to Malacanang, the presidential palace, mm -hmm. up in Manila, in the north. Yes. It was your first time there. What was it like to sign this framework agreement? Well, it uh, gratifies us because we have been negotiating for more than uh, 16 years, about 16 years. And not just negotiating, fighting as well. Negotiating and fighting at the same time. Because, uh, you know, the peace process and the armed struggle is complementary. And uh, the achievement of the peace process is the achievement of the armed struggle. How do you know that you achieved some of these gains through armed struggle that you could not have achieved through peaceful means? Well, in all the process of the peace, uh, the peace process, the armed struggle is always a component because when at times the peace process cannot move forward, then we have to go back to armed struggle. And uh, uh, so it is always a component. So we, we, we see that what has been achieved in the peace process could equally be uh, an achievement of the armed struggle also. Um, there are other struggles going, around, going on around the world that perhaps people could look at what you've achieved in Mindanao and gain some insights into how to handle their own struggles. Um, can you tell us what were the crucial elements for this agreement to come together at this time? We always uh, believe that uh, uh, political settle settlement through negotiation is the solution to the, to the problem. Uh, the armed struggle is uh, only a means in order to push forward the peace process, but finally we always believe that uh, the negotiating table is the uh, final solution to the problem. But wasn't there also the crucial element of the political will from the Philippine government's side, particularly that gesture of President Aquino's meeting you in Japan? Well, that is a significant uh, happening uh, because at least it built the trust and, and confidence between, uh, between us and the president. So if you recall it, uh, it was after our meeting that uh, uh, the, the peace process started to uh, move forward. Was that a matter of confidence, a matter of trust that was built at that moment? Or did he say something to you, specific, that got things moving? No, I think it gives us uh, the one-on-one -on -one talk with him, gives us the opportunity to uh, express 
on our side express our own uh, way of solving the problem what is our aspiration and how are we going to solve the problem and on his part also he also uh, explained to us uh, what is his intention so uh, and how how are we how uh, is his idea to achieve the the solution to the problem so uh, it gives some sort of meeting of minds in how to go forward move forward in the peace process so now that you're nearly there <laughs> We have the framework agreement in place. There are some final negotiations of very important things um, still, though, being, being bargained over. Yes. Um, do you have an idea what this new political entity, the Bangsamoro entity, is going to change in people's actual lives living in this region? Will they become uh, richer, poorer? Uh, are Christians worried? Should they be worried? What we see is the real change must come from the people. It is an internal, internal process. So we are just giving the framework agreement will just uh, lend a, uh, uh, an environment where people can struggle to change. That is why we always emphasize to our people that uh, the change is not uh, coming from outside. It has to come from inside. So we have to uh, continue our struggle. But this struggle is uh, now in a different level because it has to be a, a more difficult and uh, a more complex struggle. So we see that with, with the framework agreement, giving us at least uh, the, the, the power to determine our political future and uh, uh, give us a chance to uh, effectively uh, create change from, from ourselves, mm -hmm. then we, we can move forward. Mm -hmm. But all this also depends on how the people will struggle for change. Th that's a rather kind of spiritual uh, interpretation mm -hmm. of the change that yes. you're describing a spiritual kind of a level. Yes. A and speaking of that, what would be the role of Islam in the Bangsamoro? We will continue to uh, advocate Islam as a way of life because we always believe that the Bangsamoro people being Muslims will progress, will have a better chance of uh, progressing under the, uh, under the concept of Islam. So we will continue to, to advocate Islam as a way of life, as, a, as an instrument for change and as a, as a, as a means to, pro to progress. What does that mean for Christians or indigenous people? We do not intend to uh, let them accept uh, Islam as a way of life, but then we are going to prove to them that uh, Islam is not, uh, it's not uh, anti-Christian or anti-non-Muslim, uh, but it is an all-embracing religion that can live with Christians, that can live with other religions. Allahu Akbar! But even within the Muslim community, there are sharp differences. Murad's group is actually a splinter group from the Moro National Liberation Front led by Noor Miswari, now a bitter rival. And it's Miswari's group that's been recognized internationally by the Organization of the Islamic Conference as the representative of Philippine Muslims. What about the differences that are found within Muslims in this region because there are a lot of ethnic groups, tribes uh -huh. um, and a lot of disagreements politically amongst uh, different clans. Uh -huh. You yes. have the, a lot of uh, blood feuds that go on that have been a source of immense trouble here. Um, you also have rival 
political liberation front, the Moro National Liberation Front, led by Chairman Noor Miswari, who has said that he does not agree with the uh, Bangsa Moro ag framework agreement. Well, it is natural for people to have difference of ideas. But then, uh, ultimately, I think the, the, the one, one means in order to achieve understanding is through dialogue and uh, exchanges of ideas. So the IMILF is opening itself for a, a continuous dialogue, continuous advocacy, and continuous uh, opening of our door for uh, talks. But in a separate interview, Noor Miswari told us he doesn't even want to talk with the MILF. These are uh, instruments of Malaysian colonialism, the MILF. It was organized by them because they, they succumb to the entities of Malaysia. It's Malaysia that is uh, pulling the string behind them. I'm sorry to say this. I hate to, you know, uh, reveal this or expose this. <laughs> well... That is, the, that is the view of Ms. Fari, but uh, it doesn't mean that uh, the other, the other uh, group uh, of people in the area, even the other MNLF leaders, have the same view with him. Uh, in fact, uh, he has already agreed through the facilitation of OIC that we are going to form a Bangsamoro coordinating forum under the uh, OIC. We have signed an agreement in Dusambi, uh, in the in the uh, nineteen in the ICFM. Uh, so, so you don't see this as a serious threat to your project going forward? Uh, yeah, because the OIC have been assuring us that uh, the MNLF under Miswari will will uh, will be uh, cooperating in order to. Uh, achieve the final objective of the Bangsamoro people. Another potential uh, challenge uh -huh. to the implementation of the peace agreement is how will natural resources be managed? Uh -huh. um, ordinary people are worrying whether they would benefit from exploitation of natural resources how much would go to the Bangsamoro entity, how much would go to the Philippine government? Presently, we are discussing this, our panel is uh, discussing this on the annex on wealth sharing. And uh, uh, initially, there has been uh, already some kind of understanding that uh, the, uh, this area would be concurrent between the uh, the uh, Bangsamoro government and the central government. Uh, but then we are not yet through on the uh, sharing, but uh, it is in favor of the Bangsamoro uh, government. So hopefully this will be settled as soon as possible. There is already some uh, kind what's, of what's the overriding principle uh, that the negotiators, at least on your side, are keeping in mind when they're negotiating this? We always uh, see that uh, because this is a very impo important uh, element uh, in, in the progress of the Bank Samoro. So uh, the management should be uh, with the Bank Samoro and uh, the share from it will be more for the Bank Samoro. I, already, I think I already saw an article that, uh, that where it said something that uh, that Petronas, the Malaysian state-owned uh, company, would be welcome to invest in Mindanao once the Bangsamoro entity is there. Um, can you tell us what's behind that? Well, it's not only Petronas, uh, but other companies also may, uh, because uh, it will be open for foreign companies. We know that uh, we do not uh, have the capability to to effectively explore our natural resources. But as long as uh, it will be for the benefit of the Bangsamoro, largely for the benefit of the uh, Bangsamoro people. How can potential foreign investors be sure, though, that their money is going to be safe, as it were? 
I mean, it's all very well, this negotiation going on with the people who are running the MILF at the moment, and we have a very committed president in Manila. Uh -huh. But what if everything changes? Well, we always uh, uh, call upon the investors. We say that uh, uh, we have to wait first until the comprehensive agreement uh, is in place. Because once the comprehensive agreement is in place, then uh, the, uh, there will be institutionalization of the process. So uh, even though uh, another pr president will come in, as long as uh, this comprehensive agreement is already institutionalized, then there will be no changes because uh, it, it becomes uh, a law of the land. Uh, it could be accommodated by the, by the Constitution. Which makes this current period extremely important. Yes. You only have a small window of time, really, a few years, yes, yes. in order to institutionalize the yeah. agreement. But there are a lot of people who want to sabotage it. In particular, people are getting nervous about what's happening in the Malaysian state of Sabah. For some Philippine Muslims, it's part of their heritage that they want back from Malaysia, which has administered the area for decades. But why did those gunmen risk going to Sabah now? Well, uh, we hope it is not linked to the peace process because this issue has nothing to do with the peace process. Uh, but uh, as of now, the MILF uh, maintains a uh, no comment uh, stand because we, we are more focused on the peace process and we do not want to complicate the peace process with this issue because we feel that uh, this is a separate issue from the peace process. It would seem to be a separate issue but if I may press you a little bit on this uh, the thing is that there's a question about the credibility of the process itself that is brought into question because the hypothesis from people who do not trust the process you're in mm -hmm. that is that the Moro Islamic Liberation Front has chosen not to follow the Philippine claim to Sabah in exchange for this agreement. No, basically, the, this is a non-issue because it is not part of the negotiation. You will, re, we, you will recall that uh, even in the 1976 peace agreement, 1996 peace agreement of the MNLF, there was never a mention about Sabah, about uh, uh, the Sabah claim. Uh, because it is not part, of the peace process is uh, a, a, between the uh, Bangsamoro people and the Philippine government. It has nothing to do with the, the issue of Sabah, uh, Sabah claim or Sarawak claim. So uh, you, you will notice that in all the past peace processes, 1976 peace process, 1996 peace process, there was no ever mention about uh, Sabah claim or whatever. So why only now that they are trying to they are trying to say that the framework agreement did not mention about the Sabah claim and uh, so, so on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you talk more about how you got to this point? What support have you had from the rest of the world? We have an international audience and um, they may not realize that there's been a lot of support from other countries uh, in the Islamic world. Well, uh, you know, during the peace process, as early as 2003, we have already opened up for uh, uh, a small-scale rehabilitation and development program. This is because we feel that as early as the, when we have uh, the peace process, then there must be some uh, movement in the, in the ground. There must be some peace-building process in the ground. So. Uh, we were happy because the international community, uh, World Bank, even the United Nations agencies, 
and other countries like uh, Japan have uh, uh, assisted, have helped us in, uh, in as early as uh, uh, 2003 when the Bangsamoro Development Agency was uh, agreed upon to be established. Then we have been uh, engaged in a small-scale development program. How about um, going back? I mean, you yourself said that the peace process goes part and parcel with armed struggle. How about international support for the armed struggle? Um, if I might bring Malaysia in again, ha is, ha has Malaysian support been very important to the MILF? The, the role of Malaysia has been very significant because uh, uh, during the, it, it was only during the facilitation of the Malaysia that the, the peace process had uh, moved forward. Well, there are conspiracy theories about that. Well, the, 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 uh, the people, we cannot avoid people to think of, of, about this, but then uh, it is natural that as facilitator, Malaysia will do, uh, uh, do its part in order to push the peace process. That's a normal situation because they are the facilitator. And when Malaysia came as facilitator, it was not a voluntary act of Malaysia, but they were invited by the Philippine government during the administration of Arroyo to, to facilitate the peace process. There are those though, who say that the MILF, through the armed struggle, was uh, formed by Malaysia as an instrument of its own agenda in Mindanao. The MILF came from the MLF. We were together in the MLF, uh, all together. We were in the MLF in the 19, uh, starting 1972. When, when the MLF was formed, we were part of the MLF. We separated from the MLF in 1978 and uh, formed the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. So it was not a making of Malaysia. It is an internal development in the MNLF. But Chairman Noor of the MNLF says that this was uh, set up by Dr. Mahathir, the former Prime Minister. Uh, during the time when, when Malaysia came in, uh, we were already, we never, uh, we were never recognized by, by Malaysia at the time when we split from the MNLF. It was only, when the, the recognition came only during the invitation of Arroyo to, uh, to Malaysia to come in as facilitator, they never recognized us. Uh, starting from 1978, when we split from the MNLF, Malaysia and other OIC member states never recognized the MILF. So uh, it was only uh, in 2001 that Malaysia started to recognize us upon invitation of the Philippine government. So we have no relation whatsoever with Malaysia when we have uh, the MILF. Let me ask you, looking back at your career, um, there was a time when you were a fighter, just yes. like the boys that we can see mm -hmm. uh, here on your camp, Darapanan. Yeah, yes. um, now, you're visiting Malakanyang Palace <laughs> and uh, the leader of the group. There's so much has changed for the people in Muslim Mindanao and yet, in a way, very little has changed. Yes. So what does this moment mean to you? Well, this is a moment of a more difficult and more uh, complex struggle ahead. We, are, we, we recognize the, the challenges ahead. Oh, that is why we always say to our people that uh, it doesn't mean that the struggle is finished. We have to uh, uh, move ahead when we have to uh, make sure that we succeed because it is now in our hands that we succeed. So uh, this, this is a very, uh, this uh, situation now uh, is a very critical situation to the Bangsamoro people. The future is in your hands. Yes, the, fu the future is in, in, in our hands. Thank yeah. you very much indeed, Chairman Thank you very much, of the uh, Moro yes. Islamic Liberation Thank you Front, very much. for talking Thank to you our Jazeera. Thank you.